have you ever felt disappointed about something? Maybe you were hoping for a particular type of present on your birthday or at Christmas time, you didn't get it. Or maybe you felt disappointed at someone who treated you badly and you discovered that he or she was not quite as good a friend as you had hoped. I wonder how you acted when you were disappointed. Sometimes when we are very disappointed and frustrated, it makes us act rather badly. Hello everyone, I'm Kathleen Pelly. Welcome to Journey with Story. Today's story is about two little mice who are so disappointed when they sneak into a doll's house and discover that the food they had been hoping to eat there was just pretend food, not real and not at all suitable for eating. And that made them act very, very badly. Still, let's see if they manage to redeem themselves, to turn things around and be good again. Let's take a journey with The Tale of Two Bad Mice by Beatrix Potter. Once upon a time, there was a very beautiful doll's house. It was red brick with white windows and it had real muslin curtains and a front door and a chimney. It belonged to two dolls called Lucinda and Jane. At least it belonged to Lucinda, but she never ordered meals. Jane was the cook. But she never did any cooking because the dinner had been bought or ready-made in a box full of shavings. There were two red lobsters and a ham, a fish, a pudding and some pears and oranges. They would not come off the place but they were extremely beautiful. One morning Lucinda and Jane had gone out for a drive in the doll's perambulator. That's a pram. There was no one in the nursery and it was very quiet. Presently there was a little scuffling and scratching noise in a corner near the fireplace where there was a hole under the skirting board. Tom Thumb put out his head for a moment and then popped it in again. Tom Thumb was a mouse. A minute afterwards, Hunka Munka, his wife, put her head out too. And when she saw that there was no one in the nursery, she ventured out on the oilcloth under the coal box. The doll's house stood at the other side of the fireplace. Tom Thumb and Hunka Munka went cautiously across the hearth rug. They pushed the front door. It was not fastened. Tom Thumb and Hunka Munka went upstairs and peeped into the dining room. Then they squeaked with joy. Such a lovely dinner was laid out upon the table. There were tin spoons and lead knives and forks and two dolly chairs, all so convenient. Tom Thumb set to work at once to carve the ham. It was a beautiful shiny yellow streak with red. The knife crumpled up and hurt him. He put his finger in his mouth. It's not boiled enough, it's hard. You have a try, Hunka Munka. Hunka Munka stood up in her chair and chopped at the ham with another lead knife. Oh, it's as hard as the hams at the cheesemongers, said Hunka Munka. The ham broke off the plate with a jerk and rolled under the table. Let it alone, said Tom Thumb. Give me some fish, Hunka Munka. Hunka Munka tried every tin spoon in turn. The fish was glued to the dish. Then... Tom Thumb lost his temper. He put the ham in the middle of the floor and hit it with the tongs and with the shovel. Bang, 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 smash, smash, smash. The ham flew all into pieces, for underneath the shiny paint it was made of nothing but plaster. Then there was no end to the rage and disappointment of Tom Thumb and Unka Munka. They broke up the pudding, the lobsters, the pears and the oranges. As the fish would not come off the plate... They put it into the red-hot, crinkly paper fire in the kitchen, but it would not burn either. Tom Thumb went up the kitchen chimney and looked out at the top. There was no soot. While Tom Thumb was up the chimney, Hunka Munka had another disappointment. She found some tiny canisters upon the dresser labelled rice, coffee, seagull. But when she turned them upside down, there was nothing inside except red and blue beads. Then those mice set to work to do all the mischief they could, especially Tom Thumb. He took Jane's clothes out of the chest of drawers in her bedroom and he threw them out of the top floor window. But Hunka Munka had a frugal mind 
After pulling half the feathers out of Lucinda's bolster, she remembered that she herself was in want of a feather bed. With Tom Thumb's assistance, she carried the bolster downstairs and across the hearthrug. It was difficult to squeeze the bolster into the mouse hole, but they managed it somehow. Then Hunkamunka went back and fetched a chair, a bookcase, a bird cage, and several small odds and ends. The bookcase and the bird cage refused to go into the mouse hole. Hunkamunka left them behind the coal box and went to fetch a cradle. Hunkamunka was just returning with another chair when suddenly there was a noise of talking outside upon the landing. The mice rushed back to their hole and the dolls came into the nursery. What a sight met the eyes of Jean and Lucinda. Lucinda sat upon the upset kitchen stove and stared, and Jean leant against the kitchen counter and smiled, but neither of them made any remark. The bookcase and the bird cage were rescued from under the coal box, but Hunka Munka had got the cradle and some of Lucinda's clothes. She also has some useful pots and pans and several other things. The little girl that the doll's house belonged to said, I will get a doll dressed like a policeman. But the nurse said, I will set a mouse trap. So that is the story of the two bad mice, but they were not so very, very naughty after all, because Tom Thumb paid for everything he broke. He found a crooked sixpence under the hearth rug, and upon Christmas Eve, he and Hunka Munka stuffed it into one of the stockings of Lucinda and Jane. And very early every morning before anybody is awake, Hunka Munka comes with her dustpan and her broom to sweep the dolly's house. So, what do you think? Do you agree that Tom Thumb and his wife made up for their naughtiness at the end? I think they did. And after all, they must have been so terribly disappointed when they discovered that they couldn't eat all that pretend food in the doll's house. Well, we'd love to see some of your drawings from these two bad mice who became good again. Don't forget, you can send them to us on Instagram at Journey with Story. Cheerio then. Join me next time for... Journey with Story.